Today in the news, we got a sort of Zen 2.5, a badly named series, and China. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. So, in the last few months, console news, rumors, and leaks have been popping in left and right, but Sony always seemed to be ahead of Microsoft in talking about their consoles in an official way. Their interview with Wired, where the lead architect talked about the PS5 and its SSD, the other interview about the controller having force feedback on the triggers, and even the dev kit pictures that kept popping up. Microsoft just seemed a little late to the party and didn't have the same amount of exposure as Sony's console. Well, no more since the green team has just unveiled their next gen console named the Xbox Series X. It's such a terrible name. I mean, this is not a watch, Microsoft. It's a console. It, it needs a cool name. I would have preferred X1000. Wait, that's bad too. Anyways, they unveiled it, and wow, is it a piece of equipment. It might not seem like it, but that thing is huge. Judging by the disc slot, it's around seven inches wide and thick, and about 12 inches tall. That makes it about the same volume, if not more, compared to the original Xbox One X. You know, the one that looks like a big VCR. This thing will not fit anywhere in my cabinet, that is for sure. It seems like Microsoft just said, hey, let's just build a mini ITX PC and ship that. Now, of course, that's not a exactly what they did. Microsoft did say that they would use a custom SOC, which brings me to the title of this video. This SOC is weird. So here are the facts. Microsoft will use AMD's next-gen RDNA for the console's graphics, so RDNA 2. Microsoft will also use AMD's Zen 2 architecture for the CPU. Now, Zen 2, as AMD likes to remind us, is based on the 7 nanometer process. As for RDNA 2, AMD locked it in for a 7 nanometer plus EUV process. You see where I'm going here? They don't have the same process, yet are still on the same chip. This means that the custom chips for consoles are likely going to be made on a 7 nanometer plus process, kind of like a Zen 2.5 CPU with RDNA 2 integrated graphics. Now I know what you're going to say. Zen 2 has a chiplet design, so they could just plop one chiplet for the cores, one for the GPU, and one for the I.O. And sure, they could, but the Project Scarlet video clearly showed a monolithic design. Not only only that, but the PS5 was also confirmed to be an integrated SoC. They could also go the complete opposite way and backport RDNA to standard 7 nanometers. but since the console is a year away, AMD will have moved on to the next process anyways. So if this is real, Microsoft would either take advantage of a 10% performance boost or 15% power efficiency increase with the use of TSMC's 7 nanometer plus EUV process. And since their goal is to make the most powerful console, they will probably take the former. Hopefully though, the power brick stays inside of the console. Besides that, it looks like a lot of newer DX12 tech will be enabled on the new console, like variable rate shading and ray tracing using hardware. The new Xbox will also have auto low latency mode and dynamic latency input, which weren't explained, although could be very similar to AMD's Radeon anti-lag. Anyways, what do you guys think of the Xbox Series X? Is it even worth buying an Xbox anymore? now that Microsoft is putting so much effort into the cloud and PC compatibility? Let me know down below. Moving on, let's get into some quick fire news. Apparently, China wants to remove all Intel, Nvidia, and AMD hardware from its state computers by 2022. This move is to lessen their dependence on US technologies and to elevate security, all the while contributing to the Chinese market. This change is not just for hardware though. Software needs to go too. That's a bold move, but if anyone can do it, it's probably China. Then we have Apple with once again some dumb random thing. So if you buy their Pro XDR display, which costs a crisp $5,000, you have a glossy screen. For an additional $1,000 though, you can get their nano textured glass, which helps with reflections. With the nano textured display, Apple gives you a cleaning cloth, which is apparently unique. In their support page for the display, they tell you to never use any other cloths to clean the nano textured glass. And if you lose that special cloth, then you have to order a replacement. Knowing that the stand for the display is $1,000 and the VESA accessory is $200, how much is that cloth going to cost you? I don't know. I just thought it was funny that, you know, you couldn't use another cloth. 
Moving on to some gaming freebies, the Epic Store is going to go wild starting next week. Before the end of the year, Epic Games will offer 12 games for free. That's a lot of free. Right now, The Wolf Among Us and The Escapists are free, and uh, I feel like I said free way too many times. Anyways, I'll try to keep you updated on free games because I'm all about them. I probably got close to like 50 this year alone from different services. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. I changed things up. I changed, another video is gonna be here. So there's gonna be three things. Stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one. If you're wondering about the hat, it's because they cut the water and um, I couldn't take a shower, so my hair is all weird.